is the place where we have fun while we learn. I am Marara. And I am Janet. And I am Ch Ch Charlie. Hey, Janet, are we going to have some fun today or what? Yes, we are. Now, we have number fun. What play with Chapendo? Not forgetting quizzes, comprehension, quiz. And we shall also be getting creative on Creative Zone. And hey, 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 hey. Don't forget about my speedy. Uh, what? Who in their right mind forgets about my speedy? And it's just not right. So why don't we stop wasting our time and go straight into the chill out zone and say hi to our new friends. Sure. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, Marara. Hey, Marara. How did you get here so fast? I think he was actually trying to be early. Wait, now, before we start, let's say a big hello to our friends at home. Hello! Now, we are so glad to have you here with us, helping us with today's show. Now, to start us off, why doesn't someone tell us what the show is all about? It's about time. That's right, and it's a good thing I was here early. Yes, indeed, it was a good thing that you were early. Now, if everything is about time, what about the buzzwords? Let's start with Nathan. Sunrise. Time. Ali. Here. Very well. Now, for you, our friends at home, we hope you are able to write down these buzzwords. So be sure to look out for them in the next adventure. But right now, let's go and hang out with our friends. It's time for Playhouse. Promise is late. She said she will be here at quarter two and it's already quarter past. We can't wait any longer. We're going to miss the beginning of the film. This is the first time all year the youth center has shown a film for kids our age. She knows how much we're looking forward to it. How could she be late? Come on. We haven't missed it yet. She'll catch us up. Wait, where, where's everyone? Everyone, it's me. Wake up, Mrs. Zippo. Are you there? Your friends are not here, unless they're hiding. Please let me in, Mrs. Zippo. This is no time for joking. We're going to be late for the film. They left. Promise, are you late? Maybe a bit. You're not good at being on time, are you? Why do you say that? Well, think about all the things that have been going wrong with you lately. See, promise? You're even late for your breakfast. Ah, you're right. I only seem to be grabbing a mandazi on the run these days. And why can't you be on time? I forget time because I'm busy doing other things. And what are these things that are making you miss your meals? I have my schoolwork and exam revision to do. And so do most children. And my dad said he would give me Daisy the cow for my own if I can take care of her properly. I have to feed her at sunrise. Is Daisy the most important thing? Yes. Well, school is too. They're both important. Well, is there anything else? I don't think so. Well, promise? Go and find your friends. Wow, that was great. I love the bit where Ben fought with the aliens. <laughs> it was cool. I love the alien cow the best. She was frightening. Ma, Promise to have loved it. What did I have loved? Is the film finished? Yes, it's finished. There was an evil alien cow trying to take over the world. But you missed it. Oh, I wish I'd seen it. Did you enjoy it, Anne-Marie? You said you'd be here on time. You promise. I'm so sorry. You're always late for everything. Come on, everyone, let's go home. Mr. Zippo, please. 
please open the door and let us in. I'm not here. Yes, you are. You're talking to us. Oh, I'm asleep. Please let us in, Mr. Zippo. Wow. Okay. So please answer this question for me. Name one thing you like about your friend Promise. What sort of a question is that? Oh, it's the question of the day. Answer it if you want to come in. I can't think of anything. Oh, come on. You must try harder. Well, I suppose Promise is kind and generous with her time. Remember when I couldn't understand my science homework and she sat with me two hours explaining it? Now, let me explain something to you about your friend Promise. Okay, but we have little time. I don't want to be late for class. Okay. I'm sorry I was late yesterday. Never mind. It was okay at the end. We didn't miss the film. But I don't think that the others are very happy about it. You've missed a few things that you talked about with them, haven't you? Yes, probably. I forget these things because I get busy doing other things. That what upsets them. But why? I can't help it if I forget. If you can't keep your promises to others, they think that you don't care about them. I'm sorry, Anne-Marie. I didn't realize that it upsets you when I'm late. Let's talk about it later at the playhouse. We were upset, but he explained to us some things. We were talking about it this morning as well, weren't we, Promise? Yes, I just didn't realize that it upsets all of you when I'm late. Theo made me understand. It's about deciding what's the most, what's the most important thing to spend your time on. And about organizing your time properly. Now, time is limited, unless you're me, of course. Mr. Zippo, you're here. <laughs> yes, I'm here. I said I would be here. I would not like to break a promise or make one that I could not keep. I think that's what I've been doing. I meant to do things, but I just ran out of time. Let me help. You'll need a plan for your time. If you need to milk Daisy the cow, then just wake up at dawn and do it before breakfast. But I normally do my homework in the morning. That's why I've been missing breakfast. So do it in the evening instead. So you can also do your butter making business over the weekends. But what if I want to see all of you at the weekends? Well, you can do your business in the morning and arrange to see us in the afternoon. And then, if someone invites you for something, you look at your diary and see if you have time or not. But I don't have a diary. Look over there. Wow. Will that help? Yes. Thank you, Mr. Zippo. Thank you, everyone. This will make it easy for me to keep my promises. We know you can do it. There must be a reason why your mother named you Promise. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! From Playhouse, this is Quizzy Quiz. Where was the group unhappy with Promise? The group was unhappy with Promise because she was late for the film. What is a good way to remember all the things you have to do? A good way to remember all the things you have to do is by keeping a diary. That was a great Playhouse adventure. Did you all enjoy it? Yes! Yeah, that is great. And I also enjoyed seeing Queezy. He is very cool and he makes comprehension really fun. Yeah, actually, you're right. Queezy is very fun. And for you watching us at home, I hope that you enjoyed Quizzy as much as we did. How many questions did you get correct? Well, I, I got all of them correct because I enjoy playing with words. So right now, it's time for us to join Chapendo in... Cool Words! Hello, 
everyone. Hello, teacher Pendo. Now, who can tell me what day it is today? Yes, Vincent? Today it is Saturday. Very good. Now, how many days do we have in a week? And what month are we in, Marara? Um, there are seven days in a week. Mm -hmm. And we are in the month of March, teacher Pendo. Uh -huh, very good. But where are you going with this? Well, that's a good question, Marara, and you will find out in just a moment. Now, what do we use to check dates and months in a year? We use a calendar. Very good. Now, I have a real calendar here, and you also have those in front of you. Now, I would like us to look at the layout. Now, how many months are there in a year? Yes, Laura? There are 12 months in a year. Uh -huh, very good. Now, can we all say all the months of the year out loud together? Let's start. January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Very good. Oh, 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 Chefano. Yes, Marara. I think I've figured out where we'll, what we're learning today. Aha, uh -huh, okay. And what might that be, Marara? Um, does it have something to do with the uh, days and months, teacher Pendo? Aha, uh -huh. well, part of our lesson has to do with that. Now, let's look at the calendar again, okay? And you can look at the ones you have in front of you. Which is the shortest month of the year? Just have a look. Which is the shortest month of the year? Yes, Kelsey? February is the shortest month of the year, teacher Pendo. Correct. Now, who would like to share the month in which they were born in? Andrew, which month were you born in? I was born in the month of January. Very good. Now, what do we celebrate as a nation on the 12th of December every year, Marara? We celebrate uh, Jamhuri Day on the 12th of December. And it is to remember the day Kenya became an independent nation to Japan, no? Very good. Now, I would like now us to investigate how we can use the word for to talk about periods of time. Now, I will tell you a short story, and it is important that you all listen very carefully, as I will ask you a question at the end. Are we all ready? Yes! Very good. Now, last Saturday, I visited my parents at their farm. I woke up at 6 o'clock and I prepared for the journey. I boarded the bus and at 8 o'clock, the journey began. At 10 o'clock, the driver stopped the bus near a small town so that people could have a break. At 10.30, we continued on our journey and at 12 o'clock, I arrived at my parents' house. Wow, Teacher Pendo, now that was a long, long journey. Yes, it was, Marara. Now, we can say how long Teacher Pendo's did the different things using the word for. For example, Teacher Pendo prepared herself for two hours. Now, I would like each one of you to say something about my journey in the same way. Now, who would like to go first? Teacher Pendo slid in the bus for four Hours. Mm -hmm, very good. Someone else? Yes, Laura. The passengers were on a break for 30 minutes. Well done. Excellent. Someone else? Yes, Kelsey. Chapendo was in the bus, bus for two and a half hours. Wow. Well done, all of you. You've all been very attentive. And I hope you two at home listened as keenly as the studio guests today. Well, join us later for more cool words. Right now, though, it's time to join a man whose calendar is full of trips. Wait, that must mean it's time for Maspidi in Out There. How did I sleep for that long? I didn't even hear my alarm go off. I have so much to do. I'm late for everything now. I have to cut the grass, feed the cows, fetch some water, milk the cows, get the milk to the market. What am I going to do? 
let me start by getting some grass for my cows. They must be really hungry. I thought this would fill it up. I need three wheelbarrows full of grass. Let me get some more. Wouldn't it be easier if we could slow down time, speed it up, fast forward, or even rewind? Sometimes I wish the time was an interesting game, so that when my time is up, I could just drop in some more coins and get more time. Do you also feel like that sometimes? You have so much to fit in a single day. School, homework, sleeping and eating. Oh, look, I'm in such a hurry. I didn't even remember to cut the grass into smaller pieces for my cow so they might not even enjoy their meal and be able to give me enough food later. Oh, my maze, I have some weeding to do. <sighs> Having so much to do and the time seems to be flying. Well, the thing is, we can't change the speed of time. Time is passing non-stop and we follow it with clocks and calendars. Oh, not again, that is Daisy calling. Hey, you too. You have been out here on your own. Have not abandoned you. It's just that I have so much to do. I need to move you away from the sun. But hold on. I'll come for you later. My customers are waiting for the milk. Did you know that an hour consists of a certain number of minutes? And a day consists of hours? while a year consists of days. In everything you are doing, you need to plan your time, whether you're doing your homework or even playing your favorite game. When you manage your time well, you are able to stay focused on the goal. Oh, I need to hurry up. Oh, my customers are waiting. Oh, I feel so stressed and exhausted. When you don't plan your time well, sometimes it ends up affecting others too. I'm really sorry I'm late. Here, I have the fresh milk. I don't like it when I make others late too. Let's go and visit my friends and see how they manage their time too. Hey, we are here at Kahuho Road Academy. Where are all my friends? Just in time for lunch. Everyone is eager to have their own share before they go back to class. Look, Auntie Jane is serving them. Auntie Jen tells me that in order for the serving to be quicker, they need to be on this line. We need to manage our time for every activity we plan to do. Yes, even eating. Look, Simon has already finished eating and so he is now doing his Kiswahili homework. While Angeline started with the homework and now she is eating. the students here are very keen with time. But who keeps the school time? Well, I am told that in class 7 there is a very nice timekeeper. He is very punctual. In order to guide everyone in the school, including the teachers, he rings the bell at specific times. Sometimes to say it's break or lunch time or even time to change subjects. Sometimes the bells tells the young ones in the school it's time to take a nap. Everyone really needs to know how to keep time. 
Until next time, get prepared, manage your time well, and goodbye. See you soon. That was a very quick trip, right? Yes. Oh, thank you, Masvidi. Now, we enjoyed watching it as much as you enjoyed being there. But right now, it's time for us to put our thinking caps on. That's right. Our lesson on time will help us play this game. So, you know what? You should also help us play this one. That's right. It's time for the number game. Welcome, welcome! It's time to dive into the number pool and have fun with the numbers! Yes, welcome everyone! Now today it's all about addition. That means we have one question for you. Are you all ready? Yeah! Alright, so what you have to do is roll the dice. And then add up the two numbers that are on the top of the dice. Now in this example, the numbers are four plus one, which means it's five. All right, then run to the number pool and find the answer hidden amongst the balls. Once you find that answer, take it to Janet. That's right, now after your turn, you have to run back to your team, tag the next team member who will run up to Charlie and roll the dice. Now remember, you only have 30 seconds, that's it, 30 seconds to roll the dice. Get the number from the number pit and give it to Janet and then tag the next team member. If you get all the additions right, you get to take away these fabulous books back to your school. And of course, we have a special prize for each one of you. So team, are you all ready? All right. Let's make sure you're ready. Are you ready? Yeah! Great. Let's roll the dice. Vincent, you're up first. Come on, let's roll these dice. And right. Vincent rolls a... Vincent rolls a five, five and, a, and five. a five. All right. What's five plus five? Ten. Find the ten. Okay, okay look, look for ten. ten. Find the ten. ten. Look for ten. Right behind right. you, right there. You go, there you yeah. go. There you go. Take it, take it. Go the next team member. Andrew, it's your turn now. Roll and the dice. Andrew rolls a... He rolls a six, six and, a, and six. a six. Five, what's six plus six? Twelve. Find a twelve. Find a twelve. Find twelve. Come on, find a twelve. Can you see it? Can you see it? Can you see a twelve? Can you see a twelve? Help him, help him, help him. Help him dig, help him find that twelve. Oh, keep looking. Okay, it's there. Wait, there's a 12, there must be a 12 there. Give it, give it, give it. Okay, go to the next the next person. Tap the next person. And you want to forget about the ball. There you go. Kelsey, roll it. Kelsey rolls a five and a six. What's That's five and six? Eleven. Eleven. Five and eleven. Five and six is eleven. Five and eleven. Go, find eleven. Find eleven. Find eleven. Find eleven. Oh, hey, thank you, Kelsey. Eleven. 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 And finally, Laura, come on up. Go. Roll hey, those she dice. Rolls, uh, she rolls a six, a six and, and a one. one. Six plus one. One, seven. Seven. Oh, right, right. Seven. Seven. Find the seven. seven. Find the seven. Come on, go. Oh, find it. Find it. Oh. Take the seven to Janet. Come on, take the seven to Janet. Oh. <laughs> All right. Woo. Time is up. Time is up. Andrew, just drop the balls. Go back there. Let's find out how you did. Laura, move in. Uh, who was the first one? Vincent. Now, Vincent, you rolled five and five. Five plus five is what? Ten. Five plus five is what, Tim? Ten. Ten. Is that what you gave us? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. Right. Let's get out. Uh, uh, okay, let's see. Oh! <laughs> Very well. We have to let's say, I, I have to say, I love your energy. Let's move on to the next person, Andrew. Andrew, you rolled six and six. Very big digits, I have to say. Six plus six is what? Twelve. Six plus six is what? Twelve. Let's find out if that's what you gave. You didn't give me anything. Are you sure you gave me anything? Yes. Oh, there it is. Very well done. Very well done. Twelve. Very well done. You guys are doing an amazing job, I have to say. Third person, Kelsey, you rolled five and six. Five plus six is what? Eleven. 
Five plus six is what, Tim? Eleven. Do we have an eleven there, Charlie? I, I don't know. know. I think I, I saw a thirteen, yeah. but yeah. maybe not an eleven. Uh, maybe okay, not let's 11. see. Let's see. Oh! oh! Eleven. All right. Let's first of all put this one back up here. Last person to roll the dice was Laura. You rolled six and one. Six plus one is what? Seven. Oh, wait. oh it's that already. Looks like a three. No, it looks like a three. Could be a three. Yeah. Could be a three. Could be a three. Could be a three. Oh. Oh. guys that was a very well uh, done job let's clap for you clearly you got all the sums correct all right. now if they got all the sums correct that can only mean one thing that means that they are taking these wonderful books back to their school let's give them a round of applause <laughs> that's right and that's not all I have a special prize for each one of you. Come on up and take your prize. Come, come, come. Come, come on. Wow. <laughs> I am completely spent. That was really, really exciting. I'm totally exhausted. We hope you guys at home enjoyed that game. But now it's time for us to change direction. And I think I really need a break. Mm -mm. Shirley, we don't rest uh, when it's the no zone time. Because it's time for us to go see what Dunia is up to on our world. Hello everyone and welcome to a world with me, Dunia. Today I have a story for you about two eager fishermen, Peter and Stephen. One day they came to the beach to pick up their new fishing equipment. They had heard that this was the best way to get the most fish and in the least time. They were so excited about this idea so they took their supplies and went to work in the ocean. This new fishing technique involved throwing small explosives into the water, which would then kill or injure the fish in that area. This fish would then float to the top of the water to be easily collected by the boat. Peter and Stephen were delighted and stayed out all day collecting fish. However, what they didn't realize was that the explosives were also damaging the coral where the fish liked to live. So, the next day, Peter was wondering why there were no fish to be found. So they decided to use another method they had heard about to find the few fish that were left. They were using poison. They will dive under the water, spreading it on the coral and fish. And soon, the remaining fish died from the poison and floated to the surface. But this also destroyed all the beautiful coral homes for the fish and their food. So the few remaining fish were forced to leave that area. One day, the chief of the island called them in and told them to stop destroying the coral and water and give them a much better solution, a fishing net. Stephen didn't want to try it, but Peter decided to give it a go because he could see that the poison and explosives had caused so much destruction to the coral homes of the fish and they had all left, which meant his family would have no fish for tomorrow. And so they went on fishing, Stephen with his explosives and poison and Peter with his net. The net was very successful as it allowed Peter to catch just the amount of fish he needed each day and leave the other fish for another day. However, Stephen was still killing off all the fish in their homes. So each day he was having to move 
further and further into the ocean as the fish were disappearing. Slowly, Stephen's side of the bay had no fish left and they were not coming back as he had destroyed their homes with the poison. of the bay was doing great. He was selling fish out of his shop and also started drenching goggles so the tourists could see all the beautiful fish and coral in the water that Peter had preserved. Stephen, however, had nothing. He couldn't even feed his family. And no tourists came as there was no beautiful fish or coral for them to see. This is what happens when we get too greedy. We need to just take what we need and be careful to preserve the homes of animals so that they will not disappear. I hope you enjoyed the fisherman's tale and learned from their mistakes. We need to respect and preserve our environment today so there is food for our families in the future. I can't wait till next week's adventure on our world. See you there. Bye. <laughs> I enjoyed our world and we always go somewhere new and exciting. Yes, and we always learn new ways on how to save our environment. Now, should we protect our environment? Yes! Excellent. Now, as we think of ways in which we can protect our environment, we're going to take a short break. But do not go too far or change that channel because we still have so much more fun coming up right here on The No Zone. Don't go too far away. the no zone we are really glad that you're spending time with us today and that's what we're talking about time oh yes now do you remember the buzzwords yes excellent now why don't we remind everyone at home what those buzzwords are sunrise time ali here brilliant now be sure to look out for this buzzwords in today's fun packed show well Talking of fun packed show. Oh. Hi, friends. Oh, well, we all know what that means. It means that things in the studio are about to get hot, hot, hot. It's time for Hot, hot Numbers. Hello, everyone. Hi, Hello, teacher, teacher Brenda. Welcome to Hot Numbers. Now, last week we learned how to add three digits numbers. We also found out how we could carry and continue adding. Oh, teacher Pendo? Yes, Mara. Is it possible for me to do one sum just to remind everyone what we did last week? That is an excellent idea, Marara. Now, this is a sum I'd like you to do. 234 plus 356. Hmm. Now, let me see. Um... I'd like to see if the other method you showed us would work. Um, so first we add the hundreds. 200 plus 300 giving us 500. So next we add the tens. 30 plus 50, that's going to give us 80. And finally we add 6 plus 4, which gives us 10. So it is 500 plus 80 plus 10 to give us 590. Excellent, Marara. Let's see whether you have that right. And you are absolutely correct. Well done, Marara. OK, now how else can we add this sum? Yes, Nathan? 
We can use columns. Okay, we can use columns. Very good. So what do we do first? Yes, Joy? Add ones from four to six. Mm -hmm. Okay, and how are we going to write that? So far, four plus six will give us 10. How are we going to write that, Marara? Uh, yeah, we put uh, zero in the ones column mm -hmm. and carry one. Okay, very good. So we carry one to the tens column. Excellent. What do we do next? Yes, Zuena? Add tens, three, eight, three, five, plus one equals plus one. Mm -hmm. Okay, we get nine, so that's exactly right. We add five plus three, which, uh, and then we add the one that we carried over, so we get nine. Okay, and finally, what do we do in the hundreds column? Yes, Grace? We add the hundreds, the two, and the three, which is five. Very good. And as you can see, we get the same answer that Marara got. We get 590. Okay. Now, remember, the most important thing is to make sure that all your numbers are in the correct column. Okay. So the, one, the hundreds in the hundreds column, the tens in the tens column, and the ones in the ones column. What did you append, oh? Can I do another one? Please, 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 can well, I do another one? I would like us to do more sums like these, but then today I want us to look at uh, sums with missing numbers. Hmm. Now, Teacher Pendo, is it really possible to do sums with missing numbers? Indeed, Marara, it is possible. Just be a little patient, okay? And you will understand what I am talking about. So, what number is missing here? Oh, Teacher Pendo. Now, this is a really, really hard one. How can we get a number that is missing? Okay, now let's count together from 8 to 11. Okay? So let's count together from 8 to 11. So let's count from 9. 9. 9 10, 10. 11. 11. Well done. And how many stars do I have here? I can see three. Mm -hmm, very good. So the missing number is three. So we can say eight plus three is 11. Okay, now let us do another one, but this time I want you to do the counting in your head. Okay, so here is the next sum. Who wants to tell us what the missing number is? Yes, Zuena. Five. Okay, now let's check whether you are right. All right. So let's count from six. Six, six seven, seven, eight, eight nine, nine, ten. Okay, so how many stars do we have here? Five. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five. So that means Zuena gave us the correct answer. So five plus five gives us 10. Now, well done. Now, our last activity is filling in these tables of missing numbers. Teacher Pendo. Yes, Marara. Now, how are we going to do that? Okay, now the first thing is to look for the pattern. Once you find the pattern, then it is easy to get the missing numbers. Now let's look at the first row. Now who can tell me how we are counting to get to the next number? Yes, Grace? We are counting two. Aha, very good. Okay. So to get from one to three, we increase by two. One, two, three. So we are increasing by two. Okay, and to get to five from three, we count three, four, five. Okay, so which is two again? 
So what number are we going to have next after seven? Um, wait, that's seven, mm -hmm. eight, nine. Nine, nine is the answer to Chapendo. Very good, you're absolutely right. So that is two again. Okay, now let's look at the next sequence. Who can tell me what the pattern is? Yes, Nathan? It's three. Okay, so we add three. All right, so we can see that each number increases by three. So nine. Nine. Ten. Eleven. So what's the next number after eight? Yes, Joy? Eleven. Very good. So the next number is 11. Okay, now who can tell me what the next number will be after 11? Yes, Zuena? 14. 14. Well done. Okay, so it's still the same. It's increasing by three. Well done, all of you. I see you've all gotten the hang of it. Oh, did you pendo? Yes, Marara. Missing numbers are so much fun. You know, I'm like a number detective. <laughs> That's very good, Marara. Well, make sure you join us next time for more hot numbers when we'll be trying more missing numbers. Right now, I wonder what fun creative things you're going to do. That's right. It's time for Creative Zone. Hello, welcome to Creative Zone. Today we'll be creating some art. Time. Time is really important. We can tell the sunrise and we can tell the sunset. But can you really tell what time it is? Today, we shall create something to help us learn how to tell the time. We are going to make an animal clock. What I need first, I'm going to make a big number eight using two plates of different sizes. So I have a big plate here and my small plate here. Next, I'm going to take scissors and cut around a big number eight circle. There, we have our beat number eight, ready to become our clock. The next stage, we create the body of the clock into the animal we want. I have the outline of my animal, and again I do a cutout with the scissors. Remember, ask an adult, to help you cut, because the scissors can be very dangerous. My animal cut out for the zebra. Next, I'm going to de decorate and paint the zebra. Now to put in the arms, and we have the military hand and the our hand. And it's three o'clock on our zebra clock. And speaking of time, that's all the time we had today. I hope you had fun. Until next time, bye bye. 
It's really great to see people being creative. I totally agree, Charlie. I mean, people should be allowed to be as creative as they want. They should be able to dance, sing, paint, whatever makes them feel creative. <laughs> the mighty jungle, the lion sings tonight. <laughs> No zone. No zone. Okay, okay. Oh, whoa. Now, why don't you ask your parents to help you be creative? You know, I learned my singing skills from my dad. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Marara, you know what? You have actually said something very smart. So, you know what we'll do? Why don't you, me, and your dad write a song later on? Yeah, and maybe you can actually use the words that we'll get from the next game. That would be pretty amazing. That is actually a really great idea, Janet. And speaking of which, let's go straight into our next game. It's time to see if Zuena, Joy, Grace and Nathan can spell as fast as we think they can. See if you can keep up. Animal, animal, chapter, building, narrow, building. respect, Meter. deep, vegetable, work, work, work. Welcome to Spell It! This is the place where we play with our words and our letters. That's right. Now, Zuana, Grace, Nathan, and Joy, you are about to step out of the shadows and into the spotlight to compete for the title of today's No Zone Spelling Champion. Now, the winner of today's competition will win their very own No Zone Dictionary and a very special prize for themselves. Are the rules clear? Yes! Now, all of today's words will be coming from our topic of what, Marara? Time! Time is right! Now, let's get straight into it. Zuela, you're up first. Come on down and step into the spotlight. Zuena, your 25 seconds starts now. May. M A Y. Meal. M E A L. Watch. W A C T H. Month. M O N T H. Sunset. S U N S U N S C S E A T. Sleep. S L W E P. Right, well, so done, well done. All right, Grace, you're up next. Come on down, step into the spotlight. Grace, your 25 seconds starts now. Let L A T E. Lunch. L U N C H. Clock. S Repeat. Clock. C L O C K. Ear. E A R. Sunrise. S S U N R I S E. Dawn. Right. Thank you very much. Well very well done. done. Step on well back. Well done, Grace. Well done. All right. Nathan, it's your turn now. Nathan, your 25 seconds starts now. Day. D A Y. Night. N I G H T. Week. Repeat. Week. W E A K. Early. E A R L Y. Evening. E V I E I N G. Eve. E E V E. Supper. Right, well Nathan, done, very Nathan. well done. Well done. Joy, you're the only one left. Come on down and step into the spotlight. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Joy, your 25 seconds starts now. Noon. N double O N. Hour. Repeat. Hour. O U. R. All right. Time. T I M E. Past. P A S T. Morning. M O R N I N G. Wake. That. Well, well done. Joy. Joy. Very well done. Well done, all of you. Charlie. Yes. Can you please? 
is reveal the results. <laughs> All right, here come the results, and they're smoking. I'll start with Joy. Joy, you spelled four words correctly. Let's give a round of applause. Well done, Joy. Nathan, you spelled one, two, three, four words correctly. Grace, you spelled one, two, three, four words correctly. And that leaves Zuena. You also have four words spelled correctly. All of you are the winners of today's Nose on Spelling competition. Congratulations. Let's clap for them again. Yes, and congratulations to all of you for winning four dictionaries for your school. And of course, I have a special prize for each one of you. Come on up and take your storybooks. Come on up. Right now, right now, it's time for us to continue with this word fun. It's time to join Teacher Pendo as she shows us something cool about the words we know. It's cool words. Welcome back to Cool Words. Now on the board, I have some words listed in two columns. Your task is to match the words in column A with the words in column B so that they make sense. Now these are words we have come across in our discussions. Now who would like to go first? Sun and set make sunset. Sun and set makes sunset. Very good. What about the next one? Yes, Laura? Bed and time make bedtime. Bedtime. Very good. Next one. Yes, Kelsey. Break and fast make breakfast. Breakfast. Okay. Next one. Yes, Andrew. Sun and rise make sunrise. Very good. Sun and rise gives us sunrise. Excellent. Someone else? Marara, do you uh -oh. want to give it a try? Yeah, yes, Teacher Pendo. Mm -hmm. Wake and up make wake up. Well done. Wake up. Excellent. Now, next, I want us to do something in pairs. Okay? Now, I'd like you to use these words. Ate, did, combed, went, so. So one of you is going to ask the question, and then the other one will answer the question. For example, have you done your homework? The answer will be, yes, I have. I did it last night. Now notice how the question is asking you something about right now, the present. We call this the present tense. Now we are going to answer by describing something that has already happened in the past, in the past tense. Do you all understand? Yes. Okay, let's have Vincent and Laura do the first one. Lala, have you combed your hair? Yes, I have. I combed it in the morning. Very good. Moving on to the next one, Andrew and Kelsey. Andrew, have you, have you eaten your breakfast? Yes, I have. I ate it an hour ago. All right. And Marara, will you ask a question and Andrew yes. will answer? Andrew, has Mrs. Owino gone to the market today? No, she... She has not. She went there yesterday. Excellent effort, all of you. We hope you also had fun with words at home. Sadly, we've run out of time for today, but be sure to join us next time for more cool words. Right now, though, sit back and let's enjoy another story. That's right. It's time for Story Zone. This is the story of Muyoka, the giant, and the mystery of time. Enjoy. One rainy day, Muyoka found herself stuck at home with her annoying little brother, Ketai. They shared a room, so it was hard for her to escape him. Neither could she escape the sound of rain pouring off the metal roof and running away along the muddy gullies which crisscrossed the compound. 
It was real gambut weather. Muyoka hadn't seen the sunrise or set for days. Muyoka had tried to go outside, but had almost lost her shoes. They'd got stuck in the mud. Now she was sitting on her bed with shoes and socks washed and set out to dry beside her. Muyoka gazed towards the beautiful calendar, the one that a strange old lady had given her. This month's picture showed a magnificent beach with palm trees wafting in a sea breeze that rippled the surface of the clear turquoise blue water. Muyoka could almost hear the waves as they lapped against the beach. But wait, were they actually moving? Miyoka rubbed her eyes and looked again. Her brother was sticking up a drawing next to her precious calendar. The drawing was of a robot with giant magnets for hands and feet. Don't you ever think of anything but robots? She asked Ketai. No. Why should I? He answered, sticking the picture up next to her calendar. Don't put it there. Put it by your bed. Muyoka scolded, but as Muyoka went to take Ketai's robot drawing down, she saw the waves move again. She looked harder. Just visible, behind a tree, was a giant foot wearing an enormous beach shoe. The first time this had happened, Muyoka had thought she must be dreaming. How could a giant live in a calendar? Muyoka stared hard into the picture and closed her eyes. She felt warm sun between her toes. She felt the warm sea breeze on her skin. She opened her eyes. The giant stood in front of her smiling, taller than a palm tree and with ears the size of tractor tires. He was wearing shorts and a flowery shirt. But something was wrong. Muyoka saw the sunrise and then the sunset, and then the sunrise again, all in the space of a few seconds. One second, the giant was bathed in bright sunlight, and the next, he was plunged into star-studded darkness. The waves rushed high up onto sandy beach, and then back out past the coral reef at an unnatural speed. Miyoko looked down at her digital watch. The numbers were racing past in a blur. She pressed a button and held it down. It was working. Time was slowing down. The sun stopped racing across the sky and the tide no longer battered the beach. But when Muyoka let go of the button, time went wrong again. The sun and moon sped across the sky. Why? Muyoka didn't have to wait long for the answer. Out onto the beach stomped a huge metal robot with magnetic hands and feet. The robot lifted its hands towards the sky and Muyoka saw that the magnets were pulling the sun and the moon round and round in circles, disturbing time itself. The robot turned his head towards Muyoka and the giant. His red eyes locked onto them. We need to get out of here said the giant. He put his hand down onto the sand for Muyoka to climb onto. And then placing her carefully on his shoulder, the giant ran. Over the giant's shoulder, Muyoka could see the robot chasing them. His red eyes pulsed through the dark seconds of the night. And in the bright seconds of the day, the light reflected from his metal body, almost blinding her. Muyoka knew what she had to do. She whispered to the giant to send her back into her own world. The giant told Muyoka to shut her eyes. Then he said some magic words, which to this day, Muyoka cannot still remember. All at once, Muyoka was back in her bedroom. She quickly snatched down Ketai's robot drawing. Hey, be careful, said Ketai. Sorry, said Muyoka. I'll help you draw a better one, one without the magnets. Muyoka quickly glanced back at the calendar, not wanting to give the secret away to her little brother. Imagine if he found out. 
From the corner of her eye, Muyoka saw the giant give her two thumbs up from behind a palm tree before disappearing from sight. The sun shone down on the pristine beach, which was still as still. The end. From the story zone, this is Crazy Quiz. Why did Muyoka have to wash her socks? Muyoka had to wash her socks because it got stuck in mud. What type of shirt was the giant wearing? The giant was wearing a flowery shirt. Thank you, Queezy. You really helped us with our learning. Did Queezy help us? Yes! And I think we have time for one more game. Right, Charlie? Ah, uh, sadly, Morara, we are flat out of time. But do not worry, because we will be back right here, same time next week. Yes, we will. Now, thank you very much for coming out to help us with today's show. Did you have fun? Yes! And we had fun as well. So thank you so much for tuning in. And don't forget to join us again next week for more fun, games and learning. Right here, you know where? On the No Zone. Come on everyone, let's say goodbye. Bye! Bye.